All right, we got our. Let's see if we can get it. Oh God, it's hard to judge sometimes. All right, come on. You got something for me? Try this again. Jesus Christ. All right, so. Let's just do it the old fashioned way. The old fashioned way, right? Welcome back into some Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. We are back and I am fulfilling a request to make a raw charge blade build. It was a pretty good challenge. Attack isn't really the best in Sunbreak, just raw attack, but it can work, especially with the charge blade. It's a different play style than Element Charge Blade where you just spam SADs all day. You gotta switch up the styles a little bit. So we're gonna go over our skills for this build and we're gonna do a little test run to see how to play Raw Charge Blade. So let's go with skills. Skills are, got attack move seven, Guard 4, Crit Boost 3, Weakness Exploit 3, Artillery 3, Part Breaker 3, Blood Right 3, Burst 3, Build a Boost 3, Powder Mantle 3, Blood Awakening 3, Handicraft 2, Slugger 2, Low Shells 2, Coalescence 2, Horn Maestro is just fixed in the set through the augmentation. Fortify, fixed in the set due to augmentation. Bloodlust level one for boosted attack. Intrepid Heart because it's godlike and frenzy bloodlust to give us an extra wire bug. All right, so the armor pieces I'm using for this build is Primordial, Malzeno Helm, Chest, Arms, Risen Shiguru legs, I mean legs, waist and primordial legs. And my talisman, build a boost level two, slugger level two, with a low shells, decoration and intrepid heart. And I'm using the Amatsu charge blade as the highest attack with the best sharpness basically that I can get. Um, the minus 25% affinity is a little detrimental, but I used the Kushaladora, uh, what is that thing called? The, uh, Rampage Deco. I used that since we're using Splitting Blade Axe to kind of mitigate the minus 25% affinity, although... A lot of the skills that I have do mitigate it. Like we have Rousing Roar on our cat, which gives 30% affinity right there. And we also have Bloodlust. Once we beat that, we get, I think, around 15% affinity since it's a level one. So we do have things to mitigate it, but more things on top of that helps mitigate it more. So we get in the plus area of affinity so we can take advantage of crit boost. So. Augmentations, Powder Mantle, Powder Mantle, Build Up Boost, this took forever to get. Powder Mantle and the last Augment, I didn't know what to get, so Artillery uh, won just to free up a slot. So, now, why we did this build this way. So, Tag 7's obvious raw build, we want to make sure we have as much attack as possible guard for want to make sure we can guard properly when, we're, when our shields charge 
so we can absorb the hit and counter appropriately. Crit boost, weakness exploit, standard in most sets. Weakness exploit gives you plus 50% affinity when at level three. Crit boost, boosts the damage of affinity attacks. So that's pretty much in every build, at least DPS build. Artillery, charge blade build, we want to get more use out of our file attacks. So most of the charge blades, most effective attacks will deal with vile attacks. So we want to make sure we have extra power in that. Part breaker goes hand in hand with blood right. Blood right, we get more damage back when we hit a broken part. So part breaker helps with that. Makes us e make it easier to break parts so we get blood right proc and in that blood right helps us recover health which in turn helps with this skill blood awakening blood awakening when we recover health after a certain amount of health recovered we get a damage boost so while we're fighting a monster we're healing and we get a buff for healing as we continuously heal and that else that also has great synergy with bloodlust because bloodlust makes us lose health in which when we're hitting broken parts we're gaining health back as we're losing health so it works blood awakening probably works best with dereliction because you're constantly losing health so you're constantly getting the buff back so you need some kind of health draining skill for blood awakening so you can get the most out of it because you know you're not just going the obviously the goal is not to keep getting beat up by the monster but in order to get the buff from this you need something that's draining your health as well if you're not taking hits you need some draining your health so you can recover health so you can get the buff so that's why you know all this all this is good synergy you're getting it's good utility you're healing and you're gonna get a buff for healing so that's all pretty good first for the style we're gonna use for charge blade we're gonna use the charge spinning axe so burst helps with that because it does continuous damage so we'll get a attack buff from that build a boost increase attack power when you land hits that build poison paralysis sleep blast or exhaust so we're using the charge blade that has impact vials which cause exhaust so every time we hit the monster with a spinning axe attack the attack power will be increased by 20 percent so i wish it i wish it stacked on the continuous hits on the spinning axe attacks like each hit that hits but it only counts as one hit for the exhaust attack so eh, you know you, you you only get what you can sometimes powder mantle we continuously hit the monster get powder mantle to proc and we'll get a big hit a burst hit once we go blue it's very good for any build honestly but especially for attack builds or well, raw builds rather since you know you're just going raw you don't have other assistance you know helping you like status or anything like that which I, I feel if you're gonna it's hard to do a raw build because you don't have anything else assisting with the damage like blast will probably be best if you want to do a brawl build add blast on top of that but we're just going strictly raw because this charge blade I'm using, the Amatsu charge blade, has the highest attack. I think the second highest. Second highest attack, but you know, without with the best kind of sharpness we need to dish out attacks. So that's why I'm just it's strictly raw. I might switch up and go with the Magnum Malo just to see, you know, what damage, extra damage could be added on while we're attacking but we're going strictly raw for this slugger we use an impact vial so more stun power 
helps us drop the monsters so we can take advantage while it's on the ground. Low shells helps us ch charge files faster and less hits. So that also helps and has great synergy with counter peak performance, the wire buck skill. Cold lessons gives us a buff when we, once we beat the bloodless, we get plus 15 attack power from that. So keep our raw damage, you know, pretty, pretty decent. And that's pretty much the the thought behind this build. You get a buff from Blood Awakening on top of attack boost, on top of bloodlust, and on top of our artillery damage. So yeah. And handicraft obviously boosts the purple sharpness because purple sharpness is great to have. It gives you probably about a 10% attack boost to your damage. So if you can get your weapons to purple sharpness, do that. Definitely do that. You won't regret it. So let's go out and field test this baby, shall we? Let's go. Go. Now you could also add Mail of Hellfire to the build for more attack damage. At level three, Mail of Hellfire is basically like having an attack seven. But the only thing with Mail of Hellfire is you're gonna take a huge hit to defense. So, if you feel you're okay with that, you know, if you run followers, the twins can definitely help with, you know, uh, defense being lost and whatnot because they give great buffs. So, if you run twins, you can run Mail of Hellfire, sure. But, you know, if you just run your companions, I wouldn't recommend Hell of Mail of Hellfire. Just, just too much too much defense lost unless you're playing longsword which basically bypass the rules of the game no shade no shade no shade to longsword but it does bypass the rules you kind of just you know quick sheet and hey I don't have to take damage you know pretty nice pretty nice so I feel, you know, long sword users can't complain about anything. Got the best, probably the best kit in the game. All right, we got our. Let's see if we can get it. Oh God, it's hard to judge sometimes. All right, come on. You got something for me? Try this again. Jesus Christ. All right, so. Let's just do it the old fashioned way. The old fashioned way, right? And it's down, so we can take advantage of spinning blade axe. Got blood awakening already. All right, didn't expect that to happen so early, but I'm not gonna complain. Come on, buddy. Why can I land that today? All of a sudden, I can't land anything today. That's what I'm looking for. That's hilarious. So I got loves. Blood awakening. What you got for me? 
Oh my god. Ah, just AD sometimes, right? Where's the other one? There you go. Alright, this kind of sucks because I got a charge and then I go back to this. Oh, we got Powder Man to the proc. How do I recover fast enough to get hit by that? Oh, I got hit by that again. Ugh, I didn't get tapped. I didn't get tapped. That's interesting. Alright. See if we can get some of this. Am I gonna die? Probably. Oh, I love you, Monster Hunter. I love you sometimes, Monster Hunter. There you go. All right, see if we can run up. Now use this cuz spinning blade axe, those little hits add up. All right, so. Some of the things I don't like about Sunbreak, honestly, because I'm trying to do something and Monster can just interrupt what you're doing, you know? It's like I'm literally trying to finish this guy off, but then some other monster just comes in and just interrupts what I'm trying to do, like in a showcase or something. Mind you, no, it was no monsters nearby, but it's just, oh, I'll just come in and interrupt, see what you guys are doing. Oh, there's that. Another job well done. It's kind of just, I was kind of not, I was kind of hoping that wouldn't happen, but, you know, what can oh, you do? But all in all, it's pretty much how the raw charge blade work. More so use spinning blade axe instead of SP, SADs, I said, I was about to say SPD. SADs because those little hits that spinning blade axe procs, it, they add up very fast. So it hits about five times. So say each one is like 40 per so 40 per hit that's an extra 200 damage on top of the initial hit of the axe so you potentially do like four to six to seven hundred damage per axe wipe so that's that's why you know spinning blade axe is pretty good for raw builds and with everything else you're getting oh i got a mantle 
probably need that somewhere down the line. I wanted it to be a little better, a bit of, bit of a better demonstration. Obviously, the Barry off came in and just, you know, kind of ruined all that. But you see all the extra benefits you get from the build. Blood, blood Awakening. Blood Awakening, Blood Right, Heart Breaker, all that gives you utility so you can heal, get your health back very quickly. You got Slugger, pretty much KO the monsters, topple them. Anyway, way you can take advantage of that situation. And if you're down on health, that's a great chance to get your health back. And you also have the... What else? Uh, Frenzy Bloodlust gives you wire bug back so you can, you know, use counter peak performance just in case the monster roars. You can absorb it, get your vials back. You can also get a possible AED on the head, you know, free damage, you know, extra wire bug, free damage. Can't beat that. So it's, it's not bad at all. Playing raw charge blade, it's not bad at all. You just have to, you know, switch up your play style a bit to adapt to not using SAEDs all the time and using more of the spinning blade axe, the spinning axe, you know. So it's it's not bad. It's, it's really not a bad build. It's not a raw going raw charge blade is not bad at all after just seeing, you know, how you can work it is all and if you're playing in a group obviously if you can top of the monster pretty often that helps the group out stun stun damage on top of paralysis on top of everything else you know it just it just helps out the team but i hope you found this showcase build video useful if you're going raw charge blade i'd like to thank you for watching as always do the proper thing like share subscribe tune into the next videos and i will see you then Peace.